Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this video. The last video I did was about MQTT and this one is also going to be about MQTT. The last one was about what MQTT was and how it worked. This one is about how you can use it in a practical way. So here I have an ESP32 with a simple temperature and humidity sensor which I'll show you. I'm not going to show you how to wire it because it's three wires you can easily google it. There's an ESP32 there, and as you can see, the little sensor. That's wired up, and the microcontroller pulls the sensor for data every few seconds, and it posts it to the broker, and the broker in turn um, posts it to whoever is, um, what's the word, subscribed, subscribed to that particular topic. So I'm going to show you this thing working. Um, on both sides, on the transmitter side and you could say the receiver side. Um, so if you want to do this, of course there's one thing that you're definitely going to need and that's a broker of some sort. Now you can use your own server, but in my case I've not used my own server because a company called Reax have given me the service for free. Um, and I'll show, you, I'll show you what they've given me for free. Um, maybe you'll be interested or maybe not, it's up to you. but. Basically, the, the broker is the, is the critical part that um, receives the data and forwards it on to whoever's interested. So the service that I've got is called RYC1001, MQTT protocol suitable for low volume, blah, 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 blah. If you saw my other video, you probably already know what this is. But anyway, where's the price? Um, where is the price? Yeah, five years, monthly messages, that's a lot of messages. Um, I can't actually see the price, but um, it'll be on it'll be on Amazon or or eBay or something. Um, let me just have a quick look to see if I can find it. There's one on Amazon. I don't really like mentioning these names, um, but let's just see how much it would cost. Okay, fifteen dollars. Presumably, that's U.S. dollars. Um, shipping. Well, I don't understand that because there isn't any shipping. Uh, it's not a tangible product. So anyway, fifteen dollars. Um, and there's some uh, details. Anyway, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, or something like that. It lasts for five years, so it's you know it's it's really good value to be fair. Um, now, so the first thing I'm going to show you is coding. Coding for a microcontroller. For me, it happens to be the ESP32. You can actually use um, you can actually use any that has a TCP uh, that's able to make a TCP connection because that's what it's based on. Of course, the ESP32 and the ESP36 um, 8266 are Wi-Fi enabled. And if they're Wi-Fi enabled, then they can obviously connect to the router and blah blah blah. I think you understand what I mean. Um, you can. It's got connectivity, um, and of course, you need that connectivity in order to communicate with the, um, the MQTT server or the broker. Um, so yeah, you're going to need an ESP8266, ESP32, or something that's got some connectivity in some way. Even Ethernet would be fine, um, providing you can. You know, have a long wire going to your router or switch or whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to show you this code. So this is for the ESP32 and it will work for the ESP8266 as well, I, I think. The first thing you'll need, presumably you've, you've already got your board set up and all this sort of stuff. For me, I have to choose this board, do it, ESP32 dev kit v1, and I also have to uh, set the flash frequency to 40 MHz or it doesn't work. I don't know why, but it just doesn't. Um, libraries, where are the libraries? Include libraries, manage libraries. I'll show you the two libraries that I've got. Um, so I've got an MQTT library and simple DHT library. Again, if you use different libraries, they don't always seem to work. Um, let's see, oops, I've just clicked the wrong one there. Updatable, that takes ages to load. Installed. Oh, there we go, it shows you anyway. Right, here we go. 
MQTT by Joel Guyuilla or Guy Villa or something, I'm not too sure. And Simple DHT by Win Lim. I've tried both of these and they work for me, but some other ones don't work. Okay, so when you've got those two installed, then it's just a case of copying this code. So I'll explain what this code is. Include Wi-Fi, include MQTT, include the libraries. So include the two libraries plus Wi-Fi, which you need. This is uh, to be able to connect to your own internet um, or your own router. Um, there's the SSID and there's the passcode, which I've, I've changed after doing this video, just in case any locals want free internet. Um, so, uh, Wi-Fi client, MQTT client, prepare the uh, objects, well not objects in this, but whatever. Um, define a pin, the pin that we're going to use for the HT11, uh, which for me is pin 17. Simple DHT, blah blah blah, set it up with uh, the, the pin there. I could actually just write 17 in there, maybe a bit better, but I don't know. Unsign long, that's to keep track of time. Connect, so serial print, uh, check and Wi-Fi, and then while the status isn't connected, then, you know, the little dot, 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 like connecting, um, with a second in between. So, while it's not connected, then um, try to connect. So here you put in your client ID, your user ID and your password. You would get this from your broker. So I've got mine. So when, when you buy the service, they'll usually send you an email or something uh, with the, the details in your credentials. So put your credentials in there. For obvious reasons, I haven't, I haven't put mine in there. I have when I flashed it, but I've just deleted them for the video because otherwise you guys could use my limit. And we can't have that. Um, so similar sort of thing, connect. And when it's connected, and say connected. Set up. Hang on a minute. Ah, oh, that was actually a a method, well an equivalent of a method. I know that this isn't object orientated, but um So in the setup, which actually gets run first, we've got serial begin, setup serial. Begin Wi-Fi with the SSID and the password, and um, try to connect. So you put your um, broker uh, a few DN domain name in there. And net, what's net? Let me see what that is. Ah, Wi-Fi client. Okay, that's the client that it's going to use to connect to. Then connect. Um, then, in the loop, client loop, and to be fair, I'm not sure what that does. Um, delay 10 milliseconds, I'm not entirely sure what that does. I, th I think it's something to do with stability, like you're going to put that in for um, stability reasons, otherwise it'll crash or something. I'm, I'm not too sure. I mean, this code is just code that I've got from examples, and I've sort of kind of merged it all together and tweaked it a little bit. If client is not connected, so this is in the loop now, so this is every few milliseconds, if the client becomes disconnected, in other words, try to reconnect. If millis now take away the last time that this portion of code here was run is greater than 15 seconds, then do the code. If it's not, then don't do the code. And this is a way of um, limiting how often you want uh, some certain action to be done, polled or whatever. Um, now, if you, if you did it a different way and put huge delays that would block, you'd have blocking code which causes that like, hanging and stuff. So uh, initialize the uh, temperature variable and humidity, initialize this, uh, this error thing here. Then error, which is this one here which stores the status presumably of, of read. Uh, this equals read. Now, at this point, if read, if, if that method um, returns, you know, simple DHT error failure or something like that, then this doesn't continue. Uh, sorry, no, that does that does continue there. Otherwise, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't run what's nested in here. So, in other words, 
if you read it and the result is not success then print this failed print this print this print this and then return but if it if it's successful then obviously that doesn't get run then print the temperature print that print the humidity print that and now this is the critical bit now this is really simple though this is really simple for what we're trying to do I mean publishing data Anytime you want to an MQTT broker or server, you know, it's quite complicated really, but look at this, two lines. Well, actually it's one line to publish. So we've actually got some really good libraries here. Um, so what's actually happening here? So client, that's the MQTT client, publish, which obviously says that we're trying to publish and not something else like uh, subscribe or something. We're publishing to the slash temp topic and we're publishing this, which is temperature, which will be, well, whatever the temperature is, whatever it reads. Um, in other words, every 15 seconds we're transmitting this, or publishing this, and we're publishing to two different topics. So as far as the SP32 is concerned, that's it. So it reads the, the data every 15 seconds, and then it publishes them to the MQTT server. Simple as that. Okay, but the next bit now is the uh, receiving end. So what do we do with the receiving end? I'll show you now. Alright, so what happens on the receiving end? I'll show you now. There are lots of ways that you could actually receive, like I mentioned before, you could have a, you could have a client on any platform you wanted. You could have one on Android, Apple Mac, iPhone, anything, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to show you on Windows because I find Windows easier because I can control everything from Windows. So there's an app called um, MQTT.fx and if you get the new version I think you have to pay for it but I'm using the old version, uh, version 1.71 and it works perfectly for me anyway. So click on the cog, uh, give it a profile name Choose the profile type. I'll have to look at Google Cloud. Um, put in the FQDN of the broker. In my case, it's iot.rayax.com because it's my broker. And the port, which uh, the port is default at 1883, I believe. The client ID, for me, the client ID is this, but the last four characters, you, you, um, you do it yourself. So this client here, for example, could be 0000. Whereas this this client here that I'm about to set up could be zero zero one, um, sorry zero 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 one, or you could have zero 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 two, and it's a way of um, addressing them, I guess. So then go through here, general, all this sort of stuff, put your credentials in and all that, and then it's just a case of connecting. So we'll go to connect. We're connected now. I could publish. I could do these things here but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to keep it simple so we want to subscribe to a topic and we want to subscribe to the temp topic and the hum topic remember that these are publishing them every 15 seconds and the temperature so we could be we could actually be anywhere in the world now uh, connecting to this server or this broker and we could be receiving these messages of course MQTT it's just a way of showing, sorry, this MQTT.fx is just a way of showing you the thing working, but in reality, you'd probably have an app and the app would do something depending on, on what data it receives. Anyway, so we want to subscribe to temp. Subscribe to temp and subscribe to home, which is humidity. And here you can see that the messages are coming through this has just come through now, so 21 degrees, 38 humidity, presumably that's percentage, but I'm not, I'm not too sure. Another two have just come through, and you can see that they're split, so you've got the green and blue representing different topics. And, um, and that's MQTT, another two have just come through. So that's MQTT, that's how... Um, that's how you program it on ESP32 or ESP8266. 
probably Arduino um, in general is probably is probably somewhat similar. Um, of course, the Nano and um, the Uno and all those don't have Wi-Fi, so you wouldn't use the Wi-Fi library. You'd use the Ethernet library probably. But as long as this thing's got TCP connectivity, you could use MQTT. Um, so yeah, what have I shown you? I've shown you how to uh, program the microcontroller in order to read sensor data and to transmit to an MQTT broker. Um, I've also shown you MQTT.fx, which is a client software which has the capability of publishing and uh, subscribing. So, in this example I've shown you the PC as receiving and this as transmitting. They're both MQTT clients, but yeah. So that's that, that's how to use MQTT uh, in a really simple way. So, I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Bye.